Okay, welcome back uh, after the break. Uh, before we went for the break, we were looking at the developmental needs of preteens, and um, uh, we were looking at what we can do. So uh, we said that you know we need to allow them a certain degree of independence, and we were discussing the areas that um, we can give them independence. Uh, so Divya says, taking care of their responsibilities, just guiding them if they need help. Yes, giving them uh, responsibilities and, uh, you know, just allow them the freedom to do things in their way. But the things that, uh, but always, you know, guide them and help them when you sense or see something that is not uh, in the going the right way, then you can just kind of, you know, step in and uh, very nicely, lovingly tell them. But when you give them responsibilities, get, let them use their own creativity, their way of dealing with it, the way of um, uh, running it or taking it forward. Uh, you know, uh, you know, just give them the freedom to do that. Yes. What else? Anything else? I don't know if you have a set of rules and boundaries that you can work with in your class. Do you all do that when you're teaching uh, teens or children? For each class, I think it's important to set rules and boundaries, you know? Like, uh, what are some of the simple rules that you can have in your class? You know, when I'm talking, the teacher's talking, then no one else is talking either with, you know, in twos or, uh, you know, or just, uh, you know, talking out loud. Um, but if you want to have a, ask a question, then you raise your hand. And when somebody else is talking, you know, all of us um, uh, listen to that person, including me as a teacher, I will listen. Uh, we will not laugh at them. We will not make fun of their question, uh, but listen to them very carefully. Um, and we will take chances in talking and discussing. Uh, very, very important. Um, so, you know, get them to set rules that you're making for the, in the class. Of course, you know, some of them will uh, go to an extreme where they can give you some really uh, you know, uh, funny rules, but you can just, what you can do is you can laugh at uh, them at their rule, uh, you know, just kind of jokingly take it um, and ask them why they, Jeffina, I think you have to put off your uh, speaker. Oh, sorry. Uh, why they want that as a rule and then you can ask the others in the class and, you know, discuss that as well. So, you know, and then finally, the child will say, I, I was just joking. It's a funny rule. I don't think we can do that and things like that. Yes. So uh, give them uh, freedom to and independence to, uh, to voice out what they are thinking, their feeling. You know, uh, they can even disagree with you at times. Um, you know, if uh, you're talking about Trinity, um, they can even say, I, I, I don't think Holy Spirit is God. So you know, get them to voice out what they are thinking. Um, you know, if they don't uh, 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 accept any of the doctrines, you know, they can just talk about it. You know, where it says all of us have sinned. Some of them can say, no, I don't believe that all of us are sinners. We are not all sinners. So don't be too shocked and, you know, uh, Ask them to keep quiet and say, that's the, what the Bible says. You have to listen. I mean, you have to discuss with them and show them from various scripture passages and, you know, get them to think and reason. And that is why it's important for us to reason and discuss um, with them and help them to think logically. Also, Paul says, making choice of friends. Yes, you know, um, help them to... Uh, choose friends, but uh, or give them the freedom to choose their own friends, but you need to help them uh, to make the right choice of friends because, you know, their friends can either make them or break them. Very, very important at this age, uh, the right kind of friendship circle. So important to talk about choices. Uh, that's a good topic to talk for, uh, uh, for to, uh, to minister to preteens and teens as choices and choices in various areas. One of them can be friends, which is very, very important. So talk about uh, scripture passages, narratives in the Bible and help them in this area. Yes. 
Thank you, all of you who shared. Um, just a few more things on what uh, you can do. Um, uh, listen to their uh, point of view, you know, and try to understand what they are trying to say, you know, um, and, uh, you know, uh, show them that you value them, that each one of them are important by genuinely listening to what they are saying. So when once they have mentioned what they have said, you can say, okay, I think, uh, let me just, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 reiterate what you have said. I hope I heard you right. So this is what you said, and uh, you know. So when you're when you are saying that you are, uh, you're saying, hey, I, what you're saying is important. I'm genuinely interested in listening to you, understanding what you are saying, you know. And uh, also, like I said, you know, uh, encourage them by saying, hey, I think what you said is so important, so right, it's so true. It's something that we all go through. What about, what do the others think? Uh, and I totally understand from where you're coming, what you're saying. I went through it when I was uh, preteen or as a teenager. Uh, so when, you, when you're saying all this, you're saying, hey, I, you know, your question is important. What you're thinking is important. Uh, and I'm here to address it. I'm here to help you. Um, but if you don't show interest in what they are saying, then, you know, you're overriding their opinion, then they will not kind of be interested in your class and you're showing that you don't care what they're going through. You're not understanding them. You're not feeling for them. Uh, for this age group, it's very important uh, for you to feel with them. That is what they want, you know, that you feel, you understand, you know, you know, and uh, when you uh, are able to uh, show them that kind of care and concern, then what you tell them, what you reason with them and, you know, the conclusion you bring about, even if it's going to be a little different from what they think or have concluded for themselves, they will listen to you. They will take what you're uh, saying. Okay. Um, uh, the last thing that we can do is continue, you know, put safe limits, um, uh, take an interest in where they're going and what they're doing. So what do you think, uh, you know, this point means? How can we continue using safe limits? And what are the areas where need, we need to take interest in where they're going and what they're doing? Any thoughts on this? Okay, social media, yes, that's a huge challenge uh, which we need to talk about in the teen sessions. You can also have that as part of your curriculum. Yes, what else? Um, how they are relating with their parents even is something that we can teach. Uh, okay. How they are... How they are their emotions, emotional handling, how the because there might be a lot of differences in the parents' view and the, the teens' view also. Okay, thank you. Uh, using modern technology, yes. Anything else? What are the safe limits? <laughs> what are safe limits? Okay, uh, so safe limits can be like helping them to uh, make their, uh, you know, think about their boundaries, you know, uh, those, the protective fences that they need to put in place or have in uh, place. Uh, what is culturally acceptable but may not be, bibli be biblical, okay? Um, so safe limits are, you know, help them to think about boundaries. Like, for example, uh, what can be some of the boundaries? Uh, you know, uh, is this an age to, uh, you know, fall in love? Even though you're in an emotional, you know, uh, you are attracted to the opposite sex, usually when it six uh, grade, children grade six, seven, you know, uh, to grade 10, uh, you know, they get attracted to the opposite sex. So is it important? you know, dating, uh, uh, falling in love. So uh, what are the safe limits that you need to put into place? Like, you know, uh, not being with a boy or a girl, 
uh, separately in a in a closed room you know if somebody um, asked you to even if it's an older adult even if somebody who's 60 plus you know tells you can you come in and you you observe that or you notice that you're alone in this room with that other person you know you need to you know have the safe boundary hey this is not where i need to be alone with this person in this room or you know about um, uh, going places you know which are the kind of places you need to go what are the things you need to do kind of uh, uh, things that you need to watch like uh, like and yeah the type of books you're reading yes um, all of these are some of the uh, safe limits even you know if you are in love with a boy or a girl you know the safe limits of um, you know uh, not holding hands or you know not even uh, doing things that can uh, escalate things among you first of all you know it's a no thing uh, i remember when i was in children's church uh, we had this uh, problem of you know some of the uh, the girls were teasing the other girls and pairing them up with boys even if they were not having a relationship some of the little naughty girls were pairing the other girls in uh, with the boys in children's church so it was becoming like a common thing and i wanted to you know uh, address it in front of everyone so that everyone knew so uh, I was saying that I know this is an age where, you know, all of you, uh, 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 especially those in grade six and above, you know, you get attracted to boys, the boys get attracted to the girls, and you, you know, you fall in love. I know all this happens and I know this is an age where you feel like this. Um, and then I told them it's good to fall in love. And so they all were very excited, you know, and I could just see them all sitting up like this and they're all eyes focused and all of them smiling. I said, so it's a good age to fall in love, but not fall in love with another boy or a girl, but fall in love with Jesus. <laughs> and they were all like, oh, no, aunties, like, you know. Uh, so I said, it's a good age to fall in love with Jesus. And then I was telling them why and, you know, and also telling them why it's not in uh, good age to fall in love with uh, a boy or a girl and what it really means commitment and and all of those things um, and I told them that you know it's not also good to uh, pair up a girl and a boy because some of them are um, feeling very sad they don't want to come to children's church and uh, and you know I, I mentioned all the things so it's good to you know place these safe boundaries and uh, limits also you know take an interest in where they're going and what they are doing uh, for you know when you're mentoring them this is very very important you know um, talk about all of these things uh, you know do you go out with your friends what where do you go out what do you do where do you hang out you know what are you uh, what do you discuss and uh, you know they all discuss about this and that and then they say no we don't discuss about this uh, this week we were discussing about this and so you're getting to know what they're talking about so you know um, get involved in their lives uh, take interest and uh, you know don't judge them uh, don't condemn them but just uh, listen to care and to help them and uh, you know and uh, also teach them how to keep their uh, boundaries in uh, place so important even for us older people that you know some of the boundaries that i put in place when i was a preteen and a teen uh, still functions today in my mind as well so it's important to teach them now itself you know uh, to put to set boundaries and keep within those boundaries and those uh, limits um, and talk about how biblical Pastor, can you unmute, please? So you didn't uh, hear all what I said, or just now? Just now it went off. Okay, okay, okay. So any questions anyone else has? Uh, well, there's no audio, Paul, because uh, I had accidentally unmuted. Okay. Uh, Anyone has any questions on what we discussed about preteens?
before we move on to teenagers ages 13 to 15, that is grades 8 to 10. Any thoughts, any questions, anything you'd like to say, anything I'm missing? No? Okay, if there are uh, no questions and nothing anyone wants to share, yes, Jeffina? Uh, yeah, so I just have a question about, like, when a teenager is so silent, uh, even at class, we don't understand, like, like kind of anything about them. Like, they just come, they sit silently. And sometimes I feel bad, they might feel left out because all the other uh, girls and boys, they are active in the class, they answer the question. Even if we intentionally try to get them to answer, I feel sometimes they are intentionally silent. So have you came across such children and what do you do uh, to make them kind of interactive? At least for us to know that they are listening, they are, the word is being planted. Yes, that's so. Uh genuine concern and I think that's a very important uh, thing that uh, we all face as uh, uh, ministers or teachers who teach preteens and teens. Uh, so what do we do when you know they just don't sometimes they'll if you ask them something they'll say mm -hmm. so you don't know whether they're saying yes no what uh, absolutely uh, you know no uh, feedback from them they're just very quiet they don't want to uh, share or talk why do you think they don't want to voice out even if they want to share and talk and voice out their opinions their thoughts why don't they do it any any idea any thoughts on that It's basically because they're so conscious of what their peers will think, their friends will think, whether the, they will laugh at them or how can he think like that? How can she think like that? How stupid of he or she, you know, uh, that's not a, a right way of thinking. So, you know, they just are so conscious of what their friends will think that they don't want to voice it out. So I think what, what, what do you think is the best thing to do when you want to get their thoughts and their inputs on specific topics which are very important and they are not speaking. They are not just opening their mouths and saying anything. You're not getting anything from them. What do you think is the best option to do at that time? Any thoughts? Okay, Divya says share your own stories. Okay. That's good, yes. I think group discussion will be very good. You know, you can put the the quieter ones with, a, with others who are a little, uh, you know, uh, talkative, who will openly discuss and say things. Uh, so when they are in a group setting and they have to, you know, share their thoughts and then you have one of them writing it down and presenting it then you can hear from them what they have actually thought and then when you begin to discuss on those points um, then you can say hey this group said this uh, why do you think this way you know so then they say okay she said it he said it then I said okay as a group why did you say it you know uh, another way you can have is debate I think debate is very good because basically, um, you know, preteens, uh, the boys are very competitive. So you can have, uh, and they, they like, uh, they like reasoning, thinking, they like competitive games, the entire group, you know, so you can get them to have debates and that's when they can get real, you can get out all their thoughts and everything. So that's another thing that you can do. Also, uh, like Divya said, share your own stories, but you can also, it's important to have case scenarios. You know, talk about various makeup case scenarios based on what they are going through. So, you know, you know, you paint a scenario and say, hey, Ruth, you know, did this, 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 this. And so what do you think? Was Ruth right in doing what she did, what she should have done differently? You know, like that. Or you can talk about some famous personality 
which they would really be interested in and say, hey, this personality did this, do you think it's right what they did, what they should have done differently, what they shouldn't have done, what they should do, and things like that. That's when you can get their uh, view, points of view. And I think for um, preteens, thank you, Jeffina, for bringing it out. It's important that you just not, uh, you know, give them the doctrines and just feed them with, uh, you know, uh, or just teach them and push it down their throats. But it's important that you use all of these uh, methods to get them to reason, to think, uh, to analyze, um, and how to work out things. Like uh, Divya was saying, for this age group, the how, how to apply what you have learned, very, very important. And we look at teens, you know, they don't have, uh, the attention span can be very short if you're not quickly moving it on for them to, think mentally, discuss, reason, and all of those things. So it's important for this age group that you give them case scenarios, uh, real life examples, testimonies, get them to speak out rather than just, you know, uh, feeding them with the doctrines and what, what the word of God uh, says. Okay. Even if you're talking about the narratives in the Bible, you can still get them to discuss why the person did uh, or behave this way, what that person could have done differently, you know, what do you think God should have done, shouldn't have done, and things like that. So it's a good discussion time, and they're able to think uh, uh, and reason and, uh, you know, apply things in their own uh, lives, which would be very, very helpful. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Anyone else has any questions, anything that you'd like to pose? Or discuss about. Yeah, Divya was saying, um, how do we prepare them for teen years uh, coming up? Yeah, so what we basically uh, looked at, Divya, was you know preparing them for teenage, right? If you looked at all the things that we discussed about, you know, safe limits, uh, you know, the the topics, um, what they're going through emotionally, looking for independence, how to help them resolve conflicts. Um, all that is basically what they also go through teenage. So it is uh, developmental needs are kind of similar. There's an overlap uh, for preteens and teens. So you're basically preparing them for the teenage years. Yeah. Did that help? Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move on to teens, that is uh, 13 to 15 years old, um, grade uh, grades 8 to 10. So children who are, or teens who are in uh, grade 8, 9, and 10, okay? So physically, you know, um, they are, uh, their growth rate is uh, uh, varied for each one of them. The physical development is um, varied for each one of them. So, you know, be very, very sensitive. Um, also, like I just mentioned that, you know, uh, uh, just don't be talking to them or uh, teaching them doctrines or what the word of God says, but, you know, kind of uh, uh, have various activities that would help, uh, you know, balance their mental, uh, you know, what they're thinking mental, mentally, uh, you know, developing a mental stimulation and also physical movement in terms of, you know, doing some activities or, you know, acting out. Uh, for example, even if you don't want to discuss, uh, get them to discuss what a present case scenario is, you can give them a case scenario and ask them to act what the person did and, you know, another team can act how they could have done it differently, you know. So that way you can, uh, even if people who have different learning styles, children who learn by doing, not just speaking and hearing, uh, they would be very, very um, interested. So have various activities, you know, like group discussions, um, case scenarios, personal testimonies, show them short videos, discuss on those videos, you know, also, um, you know, get them to enact uh, various things, um, have short games that um, uh, and activities that can uh, help them to uh, understand uh, concepts, uh, abstract concepts in a very real, in a very uh, tangible way, okay? Um, also emphasize... Um, 
sorry sorry just move to the next slide yeah uh, promote awareness of uh, you know healthy lifestyle choices very very important how uh, to take care of their personal health their well-being uh, basically uh, having uh, a mental and emotional balance because that is going haywire now uh, get them to understand why they are emotionally on a roller coaster it's because of the hormonal changes that is happening uh, basically more for the girls because um, you know when they're having their cycles they are emotionally very down low uh, they find it they, uh, they 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 get easily depressed they can get easily suicidal so you need to tell them that's very normal okay so um, you let get them to you know uh, also uh, make healthy lifestyle choices very very important choices is something that you need to keep talking discussing connecting with them over and over um, again okay uh, mentally you know uh, help children uh, you know uh, encourage them to think critically and analyze uh, get them to think deeply about things uh, encourage them to ask questions um, uh, you know, so that you can understand whether they have really understood what has been discussed, you know, then teach them to analyze the information um, by looking at different parts, uh, a, a different ways, different angles, um, a different, uh, you know, scenarios that you can paint for them and help them to figure out how they fit together, okay, to, to uh, join the pieces um, together also introduce abstract concepts um, and encourage discussion about ideas uh, talk about ideas that are not always easy to see and touch like the younger age groups but uh, uh, you know they're looking for more concrete stuff but here you know they, uh, they are willing to listen and they can understand abstract concepts so talk about these ideas. We looked at a whole lot of them for the preteens, what we can talk about, Trinity, prophecies, and all of those things, you know. But um, uh, when you discuss these things, uh, it might be a little difficult for them to understand at first, but the way you help them understand it is very, very important. So you know, that's where you can have a lot of um, uh, case scenarios, right? real life testimonies and narratives from the Bible. Okay, And encourage um, conversation, a general talk about these ideas and concepts, uh, which they are not just able to see or touch, but they can, uh, uh, they'll be able to understand. Also foster uh, independence in learning, provide them opportunities, let them do things on their own, you know, um, and uh, get them to uh, uh, find out information on their own and understand and reason and think. So for example, you can even give them Bible verses, you know, on a, a specific topic, uh, or a, a specific point in that topic. And then you can give them two or three Bible verses, uh, put them in groups and get them to analyze and think what are, what is the person feeling? What are they going through? Uh, why did they act in the way they did? You know, and, uh, you know, get them to uh, and encourage them and support them to find out information on their own and, you know, learn things by themselves, learn new things by themselves. So just don't give everything to them but use these various methodologies uh, which will enhance their understanding, their learning, and their reasoning, okay? The next one is, um, you know, emphasize logical reasoning. Um, uh, teach them to you, in other words, just teach them to use their brains to solve problems. Now, why did I say uh, teach them to use their brains to solve the problems? Any idea why I said teach them to use their brains to solve their problems? Yeah, Jeffina says because most of the time they're emotional. Yes, because they're thinking through their emotions, their feelings. Okay, so um, you need to uh, get them to use their brains to solve their problems and not just be very, very emotional. Okay, also challenge them to think logically, uh, reason out things and uh, show them uh, how they can solve a problem step by step. 
okay that uh, every problem you know you need to solve it step by step you just can't try to do something and you you know you just can't get results we are an instant generation you know they want everything instantly so you need to teach them how to think step by step to solve um, uh, problems also encourage encourage critical questioning um, what do i mean by this encourage critical questioning of information teach them to assess and question authority respectfully what do i mean by this any thoughts any ideas just let them make them feel that you know it's okay to ask questions you know even if it's uh, when it's about what adults think about or say you know it's okay to say like hey my parents are saying this my teacher is saying this you know uh, um, this important personality uh, said this is it right is it okay you know so uh, get them to ask questions it's okay even if what adults say you know uh, help them to learn how to question information in a very polite and a respectful res respectful way you know so not in a very arrogant in a stubborn uh, in a rude way but teach them to ask questions in a more polite in a respectful way so even if their parents are saying things and doing things differently you no know, like for example a, a teenager can say hey you know my i heard my um, father uh, you know talking to his boss on the phone and he lied uh, but when I lie and uh, I tell them that, you know, I have gone to my friend's house and, you know, yeah, I, uh, after my friend's house, we went out and we had, uh, you know, ice cream and cool drink. And I didn't tell them that. And I said I was in my friend's house and my father said, hey, you're lying to me. I saw you with the ice cream parlor. And, uh, you know, he wants me to tell the truth. But my dad himself in front of me, he, he lied to his boss that he didn't come to office today because he's unwell. But uh, actually, he was not unwell. He had some important a personal work to do so is that okay is that right you know uh, so the 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 uh, what the child is saying is yes is is right but you know the way that they can tell their father you can say hey you you're telling me not to lie i heard you lying to your boss the other day and the father is going to get really mad so you know the way they can uh, learn to question information but you know uh, do it in a polite and a respectful uh, way also show them that thinking carefully about what they're told is very, very important. Why is my dad telling me this? Why is my mom asking me this? Where did I go? You know, like for children, this is a main concern for preteens and teens, right? Um, uh, they, they tell their parents, you're going for tuition and, you know, they, they should finish tuition and be back home at 6.30, but become 6.35. And the, 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 the teens are telling me, oh, five minutes late, ma'am, and the phone rings. Where are you? What are you doing? Why aren't you home? It's it's already 6.35. And they think, you know, I'm going to run away with somebody or I'm going to go away somewhere and, and all of that. And I just listened to them. I said, yeah, I understand your concern. And, you know, I said, even my parents were like that. They're still like that and all of those things. Uh, but I, I, I get them to think why, you know, their parents are behaving like this, even when there's, you know, uh, you're not come home in just, it's just five minutes, you know. So I tell them, you know, what if your mom says, hey, I'm going to the market um, and, I'll, and I'll be back by, you know, should be back by 7.30. You're not going to say, hey, my parents are gone to, my mom has gone to the market. I can now watch TV, play the music loud, you know, have some fun till she comes back. Maybe you can, you'll do that. But, you know, uh, she used you look at 7.30 and you say, hey, it's 7.30 and mom has not come back. And you'll wait till 7.40 and 7.45 and what will you do? So they all laugh and smile and they say, we'll take the phone and call my mom and say, mom, it's 7.45 not come home. Then uh, I say, why did you do that? We're worried, we're concerned. Then um, I ask them if your uh, dad usually comes back home at what time? So 7, 8, you know, 6 o'clock. And say your dad has not come back home at till seven. What does your mom do? So take the phone and call dad. So doesn't she trust dad? And thinks dad has gone away with run away, who left all of you and gone? No. Why is it? It's concern. So why do they do that with you? Because it's concern. And if you lo look at the newspaper, 
you know, I, I talk about the various things that come up in the newspaper, how, you know, children are raped, especially in our country, that's become such a big concern over the past few years. I think that is the concern. So they're able to see the five minute, uh, you know, them not reaching home is a major concern for their parents, not because they don't trust them, but they don't trust the world around them. So when they're able to see that, you know, they're able to understand uh, better. So, you know, help them to think carefully about what they're told and, uh, you know, why it's important for them, uh, even what you're telling them, how important it is for them. Okay. Uh, support, uh, emotion, uh, support emotional regulation, uh, discuss and explore strategies for managing stress and uh, emotion. It's important to talk, to get them to talk about their feelings. Okay, and how to handle them, discuss ways how they can stay calm, manage stress, you know, um, help them to learn different strategies for dealing with their emotions in a very, very healthy way. It's very imp important. So it's important to do, um, you know, um, uh, how to handle their emotions. We're basically uh, writing this for our uh, Catalyst curriculum, how to handle uh, emotions because we, uh, APC's uh, school outreach ministry is called uh, Catalyst and so we are writing a clean curriculum we've started writing for grades 5 to 7 and 8 to 10 so we'll put that up on the website you can even access that we're talking about self-image uh, media uh, you know uh, how to handle emotions um, also relationship with their parents and sexuality so all of these topics can be uh, uh, ac access from our website and you can also um, use it uh, for your teen sessions uh, in your respective churches or if you're teaching in a school you can even use it there okay the next one is emotionally um, okay uh, emotionally, um, you know, have an open communication, foster open communication about their emotions and encourage them how to, you know, uh, uh, deal with their emotions, teach them good ways to show their feelings and how to deal with difficult, tough emotions, encourage them to share what's on their heart and their uh, minds. Also support their uh, journey of self-discovery. Uh, discuss topics like self-image, identity, values, personal beliefs. Uh, talk about who they are, what makes them uh, feel special. Discuss things like um, what's important to them, what they believe in. You know, help them to understand more about themselves as they grow. Also cultivate empathy towards others, important. Um, uh, you know, teach them how to listen to others, uh, to understand what the, uh, uh, others are feeling. So if a teacher has, you know, shouted at them, you know, they can feel really upset, but, you know, get them to think about the teacher, what the teacher is going through, what their parents are going through, you know. So it's important that they only not feel like, oh, everybody should understand me, what I'm going through, but also how they can empathize uh, with others, how they can understand and care about others' feelings uh, too. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, uh, the, the world, the problems that are happening in the world, help them to understand different points of view and encourage them how to help to make their own living space, whether they're in school or in, at home or in the world around, you know, a better place by uh, reacting to things in a very healthy, encouraging, in a positive and a very godly uh, way. And socially, um, you know, um, uh, again about their complex complexity in their teenage friendships. I've already discussed about that and their relationships. So, you know, talk about how to discuss various topics like peer pressure, healthy boundaries, very, very important, you know, how to have healthy, safe boundaries. Uh, this age group, it's important to talk about uh, friends, choice of friends, peer pressure, and how to maintain healthy uh, boundaries. Also enhance their communication skills, teach them, ex, uh, uh, you know, effective ways of how to express their feelings and emotions and the thoughts in a right, in a positive, encouraging uh, way. Also provide them opportunities um, for leadership roles and responsibilities. That way, you know, um, their mind is... Uh, 
occupied with a lot of things, the uh, responsibilities, they take on responsibilities. Uh, they're also learning what are their, uh, uh, their positives, their negatives, their, uh, their skill sets, uh, what they're good at, their strengths, their weaknesses, uh, and also uh, help them to explore so social justice issues uh, about how to bring about equality, justice, and how to relate to various social challenges uh, that are there around them. Okay, spiritually, um, uh, you know, provide them with opportunities for, um, you know, deeper spiritual understanding of truths, of concepts, of doctrines, uh, discuss complex theological concepts like Trinity, um, uh, you know, uh, incarnation, uh, redemption, sanctification, reconciliation, and all of these, you know, sin, salvation, all of these can be uh, uh, taught to them in a more deep, deeper way. Also get them to, um, you know, um, uh, acknowledge and address questions or doubts about their faith, okay? Some of them will not... Uh, uh, you know, accept a few things, like I said, it's okay, uh, acknowledge it, address it, it's okay for them to say, hey, I don't believe this, I don't accept that, it's it's fine. Uh, support personal reflections of faith and spirituality, uh, encourage them to articulate their beliefs, what they're thinking, what they uh, believe. Um, also, you know, ex uh, get them to explore connections between their spirituality and serving others, uh, how to uh, get them to, uh, you know, perform or uh, do acts of compassion and uh, empathy, okay? So all of this is something that you can get them to do spiritually. So before we close, um, on uh, this topic of uh, developmental needs. Let's just look at what to as expect, you know, um, from this age group. They will begin to, sh uh, sh you know, there, there'll be a shift from following rules of authority figures to recognizing their own values. They will define their own values, their own uh, rules, their regulations. What, what they feel is comfortable for them and what they think is right rather than people's opinions. So that is what is the meaning of transitioning values. The next one is transitioning to living independently. So they will transition to live independently out in the world. They will do what they think, feel uh, and think is right. Uh, they will also have a broadened thinking in, in the sense of they will begin to develop a capacity to think in much broader terms, to uh, conceptualize broader issues, begin to see how things are connected to each other, uh, even difficult abstract ideas. Uh, and this change in thinking is reflected in different ways they are taught at school, how they're taught at church and children's church, taught at home. And, you know, they are expected to take on responsibility for their own learning, okay, their own thinking and reasoning and how they're going to apply it in their own life and in the world around them in the way they socialize and how they live with others. They also, uh, you know, are um, personal responsibility. They can see many things in the in the world from uh, uh, from a very new perspective. For instance, that you know, parents are they'll begin to see their parents and their teachers as ordinary mortals, not this you know mentors or these great models that they used to admire when they were juniors. You know, and just follow everything what their teachers said when they were in grade one, two, three, four, five. Uh, grade one to four, but now they will look at their parents and teachers as just ordinary mortals who have problems uh, of their own, who have their own weaknesses and they fail in their own. So, you know, and they'll begin to think that, you know, uh, institutions like the school, the home, the government, uh, uh, even the church, you know, is no longer uh, perfect and dependable. Okay, so they're looking for somebody who can they can anchor in, who's dependable, strong, and right. And that is why you need to get them to be grounded in, in Jesus, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Because for them, the world around them is not perfect. They're beginning to see it. Okay, They're beginning to question it. And they're looking for somebody 
uh, who is perfect, uh, who is good, who is telling them what to do and doing it themselves is very, very important. So I think it's the standard that we set as children's church teachers and ministers is very, very important that uh, we're not just teaching them, but also living it through our lives so that they can see and they can even know and, uh, uh, you know, they can say, hey, here is somebody who's teaching us, but also living it and I can also do it. Okay. Um, Sorry, one minute. Yeah. They are emotionally in a very turbulent phase, so they can be very moody. Uh, so sometimes if they're moody, they're not interested in speaking to you in class, don't worry. Uh, just let them be. You know, um, their uh, peer groups is very, very important for them. Uh, so, you know, uh, they need to belong to a gang or a group. And so if they're sitting together in their gangs and groups, just let them be, but ensure that they're not talking to uh, each other and disturbing the class. And even though they are having this Tom and Jerry kind of uh, fights with their parents at home, you know, the Tom and Jerry show that happens at home, uh, and they might still angry with their parents, their family is still their strongest social support. It's a go-to group that, you know, or go-to uh, place of refuge and uh, security uh, for teenagers, okay? So get them to build that strong relationship uh, in the sense of helping them to see, understand why their parents are doing things the way they are doing it, okay? So, what can you do? Uh, basically, have fair rules. Don't dictate to them. Get them to, you know, have rules for themselves and expect them to stick to those rules and make agreements. You know, if they break it, what is going to be the consequences? It's good. Okay. Don't criticize them for their looks or the way they dress. Very, very important. Uh, keep talking to them even if you're getting one word answers okay this age group basically they'll just say yes no i don't feel like it i think so i don't think so you know uh, it's okay i think that's the truth i don't think it's the truth and if you ask them why they don't think the truth they won't talk to you so even if it's just one word answers just keep talking to them because uh, they are um, uh, you, you know, they're waiting to hear from you and uh, they will begin to analyze and think and reason out. And we're teaching them God's word and the truth will set them free. Okay. That is what we need to pray and work towards. Uh, be as positive and encouraging as you can be and stay uh, honest with them. Be very honest in the way you treat them, care for them, and, uh, you know, appreciate them for their small achievements that they make. Uh, listen to their viewpoints and their opinions. Um, and also give them opportunity to reply and participate in any discussion. Even if it's going against what you're saying, you know, even if they totally disagree, uh, just be welcome. Uh, oh, this is not being presented. You're able to see it, the presentation. Are you able to see the presentation? Okay, for me it's gone. Okay, so even if they're not able to, uh, you know, uh, sorry. Give them the opportunity to reply and uh, participate in discussions. Okay, so that was um, ages uh, grade uh, eight to ten. Any questions? Anyone has? Okay, Divya says some kids don't don't want to transition to young adult stage. Maybe they have some fears about it. How can we help kids who experience such fears? Uh, the uh, the basic way we can do is talk about those fears, you know, and it's good to have teen sessions. Uh, apart from just teaching them the, the the children's church curriculum, it's important to have teen sessions where you can talk about such fears. And then, like you said, you know, share your own life experience and they know that everyone, hey, everyone goes through this. It's not just me, you know. So that's going to be nice. Like we started a single adults meetup for those who were at APC for those who are 30 plus, um, you know, those who are married, um, uh, uh, divorced, um, uh, you know, widowed, 
uh, and unmarried, 30 plus. And, you know, first time we met, most of them said, hey, when I heard others sharing what they're going through, I realized that I'm not the only one. So, you know, it's important for you to share and talk about things so that uh, and present these things so they know that, hey, everybody goes through this. This is a phase that everyone goes through it. And, uh, you know, there's help and I can get help and, uh, you know, I can be prepared for the teenage years. Yeah. Does that help, Divya? Anyone else has any questions, any doubts? Okay, so we've uh, finished developmental needs. Uh, next class, we'll begin looking at the different learning styles, and then uh, we'll move on from there, okay? Thank you, everyone, for joining class today. Have a blessed day and blessed week ahead. I'll see you uh, on Friday for our uh, class on Timothy. Thank you.